Hi viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be addressing how efficiently thermal expansion can be accounted in a finite element simulation. So this is one of the videos in a series of lectures that I have recently created to promote awareness of finite element theory and practice. For a lot of us, finite element still appears as a black box when we start working in a commercial platform like ANSYS. Uh, before I go ahead and talk about the topic, I would like to tell all finite element users, especially those who work on commercial softwares, please don't believe in ANSYS without question. This is very important when you start working in commercial softwares. Please don't believe your ANSYS until you have the relevant questions with you okay so that's it for the introduction now let's dive into accounting for thermal expansion in ANSYS this discussion will be pertaining to ANSYS mechanical software but the concepts hold true for a lot of other commercial packages as well in this video we won't dive into that theory behind coefficient of thermal expansion or in fact we don't even talk about the theory of the thermal strain as well but what we will focus on is what are the different ways we can input the information of coefficient of thermal expansion in ANSYS what are the different ways and how each of them are different and how a test data by test data I mean if you have the coefficient of thermal expansion values at different temperatures how effectively that can be given as an input to ANSYS software so that is the topic we are going to address in this video uh, let's briefly touch upon the definition of uh, coefficient of thermal expansion so let's say we have a bar like this we increase the temperature by delta t and it elongates by an amount delta l then delta l can be written as alpha delta t times l where alpha is your coefficient of thermal expansion where delta t is the increase in temperature and l is the original length And if someone asks you what is the thermal strain here, thermal strain is nothing but alpha delta T. This is your thermal strain because this is your change in length to the original length. Make sense? Or uh, coming to a thermal analysis, the first thing you need to give as an input to a commercial software is the uniform temperature. In ANSYS, we call it the TREF the reference temperature or the uniform temperature these two are ANSYS MAPDL commands which are used to define uniform temperature if you are not comfortable with MAPDL and all those things just leave it you don't have to bother too much about it now in ANSYS predominantly there are three ways in which a coefficient of thermal expansion data can be given to the software as an input the first is in terms of the secant coefficient of thermal expansion instantaneous coefficient of thermal expansion and the third is thermal strain a new user will not be familiar with the first two he may be knowing the third which is quite obvious but the first two a new user will not be knowing what it is. That's what we are trying to address in this lex lecture. So first we will talk about the secant coefficient of thermal expansion. So it's mean, it is a mean value defined for the CTE with respect to a datum temperature. So the definition won't uh, give you much of an idea. So let's do a thought experiment as we always do. Uh, let's say I have a bar which is initially at 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, I come from India, so here our normal temperatures will be sometimes 
35 30 so let's say my room temperature is 30 degrees celsius and i start heating the specimen i'm i'm monitoring the thermal strain in this bar with respect to temperature so i heat it up to 200 degrees celsius and i measure the thermal strain i repeat the same at two other temperatures 300 and 400 degrees celsius as well then i plot my thermal strain with respect to temperature and i end up with a curve that looks like this makes sense right so i measure the thermal strain at respective temperatures then i plot this now how secant coefficient of thermal expansion is defined this is important so what you're trying to do is you're drawing this small segments so let's say if i want to compute the secant coefficient of thermal expansion corresponding to 300 degrees celsius i know this is my definition temperature because this is the temperature from which I'm starting to in increase the temperature or this is the temperature at which the experiment is started, the temperature corresponding to a zero strain condition. So I draw a segment from this temperature to the temperature at which I need to evaluate my alpha CT or the secant coefficient of CT. I draw the straight line and this slope so this let's call the slope of this line as little a so little a is the secant coefficient of thermal expansion at 300 degrees celsius similarly in order to evaluate the secant coefficient of thermal expansion corresponding to 400 degrees celsius what i do is i draw a straight line again starting from 30 degrees celsius to 400 and i report this slope little b as the value of alpha ct or the secant ct so it is the slope of the secants to the time temperature curve those lines are called secants with respect to a common temperature of 30 degrees celsius makes sense now once you give uh, this secant coefficient of thermal expansion how ANSYS computes thermal strains that's another question we need to address before I address that let's be clear about these two temperatures reference temperature is corresponding to the model that you are solving the temperature at which your model is having zero thermal strains but T0 is a definition temperature which is used to define your secant coefficient of thermal expansion in most of the cases they will be the same but even then it's good to understand there is an inherent difference between these two parameters make sense uh, now let's say how we calculate thermal strain it's pretty straightforward the thermal strain at a particular temperature is nothing but alpha secant coefficient of thermal expansion times the difference in temperature from the reference temperature I think we can appreciate this equation from the graph in a better way so let's go back to the graph so I'm asking what is the thermal strain when I heat my hardware from 30 degrees Celsius to 400 degrees Celsius when I know my alpha secant coefficient of thermal expansion at 400 degrees Celsius, things becomes far more easy. I'm asking, I'm asking what is this value? I'm asking what is this value? So it is nothing if you know your alpha secant coefficient of thermal expansion at 400 degrees Celsius, this value times 400 degrees Celsius minus 30 degrees Celsius, isn't it? So that's how thermal strain is evaluated when you know the coefficient of sorry the secant coefficient of thermal expansion makes sense now let's move to the second parameter the next way to define coefficient of thermal expansion in ANSYS is instantaneous coefficient of thermal expansion as the name indicates 
it is the instantaneous slope of the tangents to this curve to if you plot the thermal strain with respect to temperature curve then instantaneous coefficient of thermal expansion is the slope of this curve makes sense because uh, we know that by this definition alpha instantaneous mathematically can be written like this this is it because we know uh, from a very basic definition thermal strain is nothing but alpha times delta t so instantaneous thermal strain sorry instantaneous coefficient of thermal expansion is the slope of the tangents to this curve as explained over here okay so the definition is easy now but inside ANSYS what ANSYS does is ANSYS convert this instantaneous uh, coefficient of thermal expansion to secant coefficient of thermal expansion this is the definition for an instantaneous ATE I already explained this so let's go ahead the, this is how you evaluate your secant CTE from your instantaneous CTE. Uh, don't get intimidated by seeing this integral sign and all. Let's break it down. So Tn is the temperature at which you want to define your secant coefficient of thermal expansion. Then say T0 is your definition temperature for your secant coefficient of CTE. What this numerator tells us uh, is the difference in thermal strain when you go from T0 to Tn because alpha In is the slope of the curve so when you integrate the slope of the curve what you get is you get the change in the function value so here the function is your thermal strain when you integrate it from T0 to Tn you get the difference in thermal strain corresponding to Tn and T0 uh, let's break let me explain that in, a, in this graph so the numerator say my t0 is 30 and uh, tn is 200 what it does is it integrates the slope of the curve from here to here and what it gives is it gives this value what is my epsilon thermal corresponding to 200 minus epsilon thermal that is corresponding to 30 degrees Make sense? So this is what you get out after the integration. So it's easier to define it that way. So this is how you calculate your secant coefficient of thermal expansion once you know your instantaneous uh, CTEs. The last but not the least, uh, we can define the material property in terms of thermal strain also. Then also answers computes your secant coefficient of thermal expansion inside it does like this which is pretty straightforward this is the expression for the secant coefficient of thermal expansion in terms of the thermal strain make sense uh, before we wind up this video i would like to give you a best practice suggestion that uh, if your secant values are based upon a de different definition temperature other than your reference temperature, it's better you convert those values to TREF. It's a good practice to have in case if they are different. But in most of the cases, both these values will be the same. So we may not have to bother too much. So next time when you start working on ANSYS, when you see this kind of definitions, understand what they are. And next time when you provide alpha values or CTE values into ANSYS check them once again pose this question how the test data is evaluated whether I am providing the data correctly to ANSYS so next time when you see instantaneous CTE and secant CTE they are different how they are different I hope you understood by listening to this video so be careful when you give all these data as an input to the program because if you give garbage it just gives out garbage it's just like people say garbage in garbage out so be careful whenever you work with this commercial softwares and as I always say don't believe your answers uh, without questions thanks for watching